Microsoft secured EU approval on Friday to purchase Internet voice and video service Skype for $8.5 billion, its biggest ever acquisition. The former space shuttle pilot at the center of an alleged bizarre love triangle involving another astronaut survived small plane crash last month in rural Alaska, federal officials said Friday. A computer virus is being said to have infected the cockpits of America's Predator and Reaper drones, logging pilots every keystroke as they remotely fly missions over Afghanistan and other war zones. The virus, first detected nearly two weeks ago by the military's host-based security system, has not prevented pilots at Creech Air Force Base in Nevada from flying their missions overseas. Nor have there been any confirmed incidents of classified information being lost or sent to an outside source. But the virus has resisted multiple efforts to remove it from Creech's computers, network security specialists say. Another high school on lockdown after rumor of guns. North Forest High School officials lifted a lockdown shortly after noon today after finding no student with gun on campus, school officials said. The incident began about 11 a.m. Friday at the school at 10,725 Mesa Drive in Northeast Houston, according to HPD. Alabama Governor Robert Bentley said he intends to continue enforcing the hotly disputed law, which allows authorities to detain people suspected of being in the country illegally and lets officials check the immigration status of students at public schools. Governor Jerry Brown announced Saturday that he has signed legislation making illegal immigrants eligible to receive state financial aid to attend California universities and community colleges. The measure also allows students who are not in the country legally to get institutional grants while attending the University of California and California State University systems, and to get fee waivers in the California Community College system. Legal immigrants who are accepted into state universities can receive, starting in 2013, Cal Grant Assistance, which last year provided grants averaging $4,500 apiece to more than 370,000 low-income students. Anniversary conflagration? Surely the dates are no coincidence. An article from the Elite on the New York Times states that the sun had been up less than a half hour on the 10th anniversary of the start of the American-led war in Afghanistan when the first rocket struck. Flying in from near the border with Pakistan, it shook this outpost with an explosion that hinted at the long day ahead. 33 drivers working for Hertz, all of them Somali Muslims, were suspended indefinitely from their jobs after they took religious breaks to pray while at work without first clocking out. A spokesman for Teamsters Local 117, which represents the workers, said it is trying to get the workers back on the job. Both the company and the union late Thursday said they were waiting to hear back from the other. While the drivers were allowed to, 10-minute breaks during their work shifts during which they could pray. Teamsters officials said managers had agreed in negotiations that workers would not have to clock out and in, though the contract itself does not address the matter. Fruit Fresh Up, Incorporated of Depew, New York, is recalling approximately 4,800 individual packages of fresh-cut cantaloupe and cut mixed fruit containing cantaloupe distributed in and around Buffalo because it's potentially contaminated with listeria, the release says. Small town lit up by explosive early morning train derailment. By midday Friday most of the citizens of the 800 resident town in central Illinois were somewhere other than home, asked by emergency officials to stay away as firefighters poured foam on the train of fire. The cause of the crash hasn't been determined, but the ICC team will work with an NTSB team on the investigation as soon as the fire is out and the scene stabilized said John Blair, Assistant Rail Safety Program Administrator for the state agency. Former Pakistan President Pervez Musharraf has hired the U.S. lobbyist at $25,000 per month, according to an official U.S. record on lobbyists. According to the official documents of the Foreign Agents Registration Act FARA, the lobbying firm would approach U.S. officials, senators and congressmen to promote the interests of Musharraf in the United States. Japan has grounded its F-15 fighters for the second time in three months after a fuel tank and parts of a mock missile fell off a jet on a training mission, officials said Saturday. 
Japan Air Self-Defense Force officials said that the flight suspension involves all missions except emergency scrambles and will last until the safety of Japan's 202 F-15 fighters has been confirmed. Five people have been charged after a protest at the Sydney Opera House. Police from the Rock's local area command were alerted to a number of people trying to access the sales of the building. A fire at an Intel Corporation plant in Chandler on Friday injured up to eight people, authorities said. Workers apparently were welding outside of the plant near Dobson and Ocotella Roads when nearby plastic caught fire, according to Chandler fire officials. Workers have identified an underground pipe leaking radioactive water beneath a nuclear power plant in Georgia. Southern Company spokeswoman Amoy Getter said Monday that workers were in the process of determining whether that pipe below plant hatch in Baxley is the sole cause of a leak of radioactive tritium that was first discovered Wednesday. Tritium is a radioactive form of hydrogen that is created inside nuclear reactors. So far, the utility and state environmental officials say the water containing tritium has not spread beyond a small area on the grounds of the nuclear power plant. They say it is not a threat to the public. Come on now. What is going on with these seemingly systematic aberrations occurring with nuclear power plants, like clockwork? On October 8th, Earth is going to plow through a stream of dust from Comet 21P slash Jacobini's inner, and the result could be an outburst of draconid meteors. We're predicting as many as 750 meteors per hour says Bill Cook of NASA's Meteorite Environment Office. The timing of the shower favors observers in the Middle East, North Africa and parts of Europe. An intensified sustained earthquake swarm took place on the 7th of October at the Canary Islands and it appears the magma is now on the move again bubbling closer to the surface and incinerating more rock in the process. Over the last 24 hours, We've seen the depths of the tremors rising up to within 11 kilometers from a depth average of about 14.5 to 15 kilometers. The number of seismic volcanic tremors has also doubled at El Hero since Wednesday. On Wednesday, October 5th, there were 79 recorded seismic events. On Thursday, there were 160 and on Friday, October 7th, there were 177. The FBI by mid-January will activate a nationwide facial recognition service in select states that will allow local police to identify unknown subjects in photos, bureau officials told NextGov. The federal government is embarking on a multi-year, $1 billion dollar overhaul of the FBI's existing fingerprint database to more quickly and accurately identify suspects, partly through applying other biometric markers, such as iris scans and voice recording tech in Washington County, Florida. Rather than the usual name calling and response, students are now checking into class with finger scanning devices. And to keep better track of students from the minute they come under district supervision until they are delivered safely home again, the scanners are now moving from the school building to the school bus. Security document indicates that a controversial program designed to predict whether a person will commit a crime is already being tested on some members of the public voluntarily. If this sounds a bit like the Tom Cruise movie called Minority Report, or the CBS drama Person of Interest, it is. DHS is betting on algorithms, it's building a prototype screening facility that it hopes will use factors such as ethnicity, gender, breathing, and heart rate to detect cues indicative of malintent. The House Judiciary Committee passed a bill that would make it a federal crime for U.S. residents to discuss or plan activities on foreign soil that, if carried out in the U.S., would violate the Controlled Substances Act. The CSA, even if the planned activities are legal in the countries where they're carried out. The new law, sponsored by Judiciary Committee Chairman Texas Republican Representative Lamar Smith, allows prosecutors to bring conspiracy charges against anyone who discusses, plans or advises someone else to engage in any activity that violates the CSA, the massive federal law that prohibits drugs like marijuana and strictly regulates prescription medication. Federal prosecutors in California are threatening to shut down medical marijuana dispensaries throughout the state, 
sending letters to warn landlords to stop sales of the drug within 45 days or face the possibility that their property will be seized and they will be sent to prison. The stepped-up enforcement appears to be a major escalation in the Obama administration's bid to rein in the explosive spread of medical marijuana outlets that was accelerated by the announcement that federal prosecutors would not target people using medical marijuana in states that allow it. Last June, the Swiss Press Club held a launch for the Global Innovation Index at which various speakers were invited to talk about innovation. After the head of CERN and the CEO of the Internet Society spoke about how important it was that the web's underlying technology hadn't been patented, Francis Gurry, the Director General of the UN's World Intellectual Property Organization or WIPO, took the mic to object. In Gurry's view, the web would have been better off if it had been locked away in patents, and if every user of the web had needed to pay a license fee to use it. A car was left stranded in a gaping hole caused by what is said to be a burst water main on the A320 between Walking and Chertsey on Wednesday morning. An eyewitness said a female driver had got out of her car after hearing a noise when the road gave way and took her vehicle with it. Police said she was unhurt. Ocean perpetually being polluted as if like on schedule. Experts brought in to salvage a container ship stranded on a New Zealand reef anxiously studied weather forecasts as they finalized plans to siphon off an estimated 1,500 tons of heavy fuel oil to prevent an environmental catastrophe. Authorities said about 20 to 30 tons of oil had leaked into the sea since the Rena ran aground on Wednesday, and the rest of the fuel must be removed before the cargo stacked on the deck can be unloaded and attempts made to reflow the ship. President Jiang Zemin has made a rare public appearance at a Beijing ceremony months after speculation that he had died or was close to death. The 85-year-old Jiang took a seat on stage at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing on Sunday at an official event commemorating the centennial anniversary of the 1911 revolution that overthrew imperial rule on the mainland. A wildfire covering nearly 20,000 hectares is creeping perilously close to a pair of Manitoba communities southeast of Winnipeg. The villages of Sand Islands and Woodridge, about 90 kilometers from the capital, were under evacuation orders Saturday, and up to 400 people have been moved from the area. Jova has become a hurricane out in the Pacific Ocean. Hurricane Jova in Pacific Ocean could make landfall over Mexico Tuesday or Wednesday. Capsule with over 100-year-old germs was found at former Bellevue Hospital Medical College. The contents of the time capsule were recovered and they're now in the hands of New York University bacteriologist Dr. Martin Blazer, who says it was no ordinary time capsule. Blazer says his team is trying to wake up those spores and grow them so they can study the organisms. By the end of September, the U.S. had already broken the record number of federal disaster declarations issued in a single year. The 86 federal disaster declarations through the first nine months of 2011 tops the previous annual record of 81, which was set just last year. Monsanto and Food Inc.'s stranglehold over the nation's food and farming system is about to be challenged in a food fight that will largely determine the future of American agriculture. A growing core of organic food and health activists in California supported by consumers and farmers across the nation are boldly standing up to Monsanto and its minions, taking the first steps to expose the widespread contamination of non-organic grocery store foods with genetically modified organisms GMOs, and moving to implement mandatory GMO labeling through a grassroots-powered citizen's ballot.